God, it's been so damn long. Things have changed. Canada beat the US. I know, I'm sorry. I have, I had a friend's birthday, a wedding, and Thanksgiving this weekend. And in between, I was working on my next video for you guys, so don't worry. Videos every day for the next few days. I'm Adrian, by the way. You probably knew that already because you're a subscriber, but if not, might I just also say that this video is brought to you by One Football. Thanks, guys. Love you. And thanks for keeping me and everyone else who downloaded the One Football app up to date on everything regarding the European qualifiers. Customized news feeds, break news the fastest, they have live scores and match tickers, highlights, and more. Download it for free using the link in the description below. Love you, One Football. And you. All right, let's go through the groups and see who's made it and who could be making it very soon. The first team to qualify for Euro 2020, Belgium, as they have absolutely slapped their group up so far. I mean, you always expected them to be on top of a group that consists of Russia, Cyprus, San Marino, Kazakhstan, and Scotland, but they've done their due diligence and then some. After eight qualifiers, Belgium have won every single game and already have a goal difference of 29. 30 goals scored and just one goal against. Speaking of goals, Russia's Artem Zuba currently sits in second place as far as European qualifier scoring goes with nine goals to his name. Why am I telling you this? Because his team, Russia, who sits in second behind Belgium, they've qualified already too. The Russians had a great campaign. In fact, if it wasn't for Belgium beating them 3-1 in the opening qualifier, they would have had a perfect record as well, as they won their next seven matches in a row and clinched qualification with a win over Cyprus. Poor Cyprus. Down a man since the 27th minute, when it was just 2-0, Artem Zuba hits them with a goal and two assists. On the same day that Russia qualified, that was Sunday, by the way, Poland celebrated like they had won Euro 2020. Hell yeah, look at how happy they were. Well, they qualified by beating North Macedonia 2-0 with a Frankowski goal in the 74th minute, and perhaps a season-turning goal from Milik after that. Milik, not his best start of the season coming back from injury, so not a ton to blame there, but he is capable of better, so hopefully for him, this sets his season off. Poland, of course, had their deepest run at a European Championship in the 2016 edition, eventually losing out to eventual champions Portugal in a shootout. Portugal were very, let's say, economical with their goals in that tournament, hey? Anyways, Saturday, Italy, the boys in the beautiful green renaissance kits in homage to La Maglia Verde, or the green kit that Italy wore against Argentina in 1954. They managed to qualify for Euro 2020 as well with a very difficult, frustrating win over Greece, or at least it seemed like it was heading towards one of those games, man. One of those games where you dominate Greece for most of the match, and they have just a couple of opportunities, and they bury one of them, and you end up losing. You know, it was looking like it was heading to one of those matches. Matches. I cried hard that day, dude. But in the 63rd minute, your favorite Gino, Jorginho, converted a penalty to break the Greek defense like the Persian army during the Battle of Thermopylae. And substitute Federico Bernadeschi's goal in the 78th minute was just the sacking of Athens by the Persians that followed that, so to speak. You still with me? So yes, Italy is qualified as they are untouchable at the top of the group with 24 points, 8 wins from 8, clean qualification campaign so far, just like Belgium. As clean as those green kits. Come on, Puma. Send one my way. On the same day, Spain had the opportunity to qualify if they could manage win over Norway, a match in which Sergio Ramos overtook Iker Casillas as the most capped Spanish player, and some video of him without tattoos emerged. I don't know what was, I don't know what was going on this weekend, man. It was wild, though. Anyways, Spain took the lead in the second half in Norway, but in the 92nd minute, Keppa handed the Norway boys a penalty and Josh King, the man with the least Norwegian sounding name in the squad, converted the penalty two minutes later. No qualification for you, yet, Spain. But like I said, at least not yet, as on Tuesday, Spain qualified with a 1-1 draw against another Scandinavian squad, a Scandi squad, Sweden. Very dramatic, this one, and sort of the opposite order of events as their match against Norway. This time, Marcus Berg of the Swedes put them ahead just after the half, and it was Spain who were getting the late equalizer. Solid driven ball into the crowd of Spain box from Fabian Ruiz, and Rodrigo was there to glance at past Olsen, qualified. They're in it again. And you know what else? Sergio Ramos is their joint top scorer alongside Rodrigo with four goals. How? He's penalty boy. 
But man, top scorer for Spain, only four goals. Fabian Ruiz, by the way, watch out for this kid. He was great at the under-21s this past summer, which Spain won. And if he has a good season with Napoli, which he is so far, he could be one of the surprise packages at Euro 2020. Who else qualified? Ukraine, with Sinchenko going absolutely mad after the match during an interview from his lovely girlfriend. How did Ukraine qualify? Well, Fernando Sanz helped their cause by fielding a puzzling Portuguese lineup. I may go into that later when discussing the teams that have almost qualified, but right now it's about Ukraine and a screaming Zinchenko. And he was screaming for good reason too. Not only did the Ukrainians beat the defending champions, Portugal, two to one, but in doing so, they clinched a top two spot in Group B ahead of both Portugal and Serbia. And this is the first time that Ukraine has qualified for the European Championships. Keyword being qualified, as they also participated in the tournament as hosts in 2012, didn't need to qualify for that. Remember, Ukraine and Poland co-hosted that tournament. Ukraine are yet to lose in qualifying and their final match is against Serbia. And you know what? Since that wraps up all of the qualified teams, it seems like a perfect place to rotate into the nearly there teams. Serbia, they're one of those nearly there teams as they sit in third in Group B, just one point behind Portugal with two matches to go. Portugal needed to defeat Ukraine in order to make things more comfortable for them, but Sanz goes ahead and starts João Mario. Why? Don't know. Leaving Bruno Fernandes on the bench despite him being great still this season and playing well in Portugal's win over Luxembourg. Then João Felix was also left on the bench, as was Ruben Neves. Pep was in there ahead of Font. I mean, you could argue that Mario Rui has been better at left back than Guerrero this season. It was all sort of puzzling for me. It really is great that at least Cristiano Ronaldo scored his 700th career goal in esteemed company with the other five that have managed to hit that milestone. And his chip against Luxembourg was great as well. But Portugal's inability to defeat Ukraine is worrying, for sure. A draw and a loss against them? That's not exactly encouraging. So, Portugal has Lithuania and Luxembourg left to play, two teams they've defeated already, while Serbia has the already qualified Ukraine and Luxembourg also. Serbia defeated Luxembourg in their past meeting, but lost 5-0 against Ukraine. So, who knows what will happen now? Let's go back to Group A where England, Czech Republic and Kosovo are all still alive and there are some big matches coming as each team has two matches to go. England just need a point over Montenegro to book their spot in Euro 2020 after they obliterated Bulgaria 6-0. Unfortunate that on the night there was tons of absolute bullshit in the stands from a group of Bulgarian supporters. Nazi salutes, monkey calls, no respect sweaters which is of course their play on the UEFA respect campaign. It's embarrassing for Bulgaria. Embarrassing that their coach tried to be a spin artist after the match too. But it was good on the Prime Minister for taking a hard stance and the President of the Bulgarian Football Union ended up stepping down. Anyway, Bulgaria are dead last. Kosovo has matches against two teams ahead of them in the standings, the Czech Republic and England. So their fate is in their own hands. Two matches left for them. They win both, they're in. Group C is tight, my friends. Northern Ireland, Germany, and the Netherlands are all still alive, each with two matches remaining. Netherlands can qualify with a victory over Northern Ireland, and if that was to happen, then Germany could possibly go through with two losses in their final two matches, but a point to be safe, especially since they play Northern Ireland on the final match day. Group C is tight, but Group D is even tighter as the Swiss, Denmark and Republic of Ireland could all go through. Both Denmark and Switzerland have a match in hand. One of Denmark's matches is against Ireland actually, so if Ireland win, they're through. But if they lose, Denmark will go through. Right now it's not looking good for Ireland actually, as Denmark and Switzerland both play one of their final two matches against Gibraltar, which, I mean, they should win that. Group E will have a wild conclusion as well. Guys, the November international break, dare I say I'm actually looking forward to it? So Wales, currently in fourth place with eight points, are still alive as they face Azerbaijan and Hungary in their final two matches, but will need to win both matches and hope for some help from Slovakia facing Croatia, and will also then, in that case, need Azerbaijan to defeat Slovakia. A tough situation, but not outside the realm of possibility. Slovakia, two wins, and they're through, so long as Wales defeat Hungary. 
complicated stuff. Group F, two matches to play. Spain are already through with a chance for Sweden, Romania, and Norway to get it done as well. Norway, despite being in fourth, undoubtedly have the more favorable fixtures as they play Faroe Islands and Malta. They beat them both 2-0 respectively last time they met. Romania, they have the toughest route with matches against second place Sweden and then Spain. It's going to be a fun group to watch. Group G is interesting as Poland of course are through and Austria just needs one win from their final two fixtures against North Macedonia at the bottom of the group. Minus 25 goal difference, eight losses from eight. Latvia think that they can do it. Slovenia, North Macedonia and Israel are all still alive but we need Austria to lose both of their matches while they win both of theirs. So it's going to be tough for those guys. Group H, this one's Albania, unfortunately for them, have been eliminated as Turkey's late winner against them last week was fatal to their hopes. Iceland in third could be the party poopers for Turkey. If Iceland beat Turkey in Istanbul in November, then go and defeat Moldova, while Turkey somehow loses to Andorra, then Iceland would go through ahead of Turkey. Also, since Turkey was hot garbage in the Nations League, they would be fully eliminated from the tournament. No second chance via the playoff for them. France, they have matches against Moldova and Albania. Three points from either match, they're through. And yeah, obviously same goes for Turkey. Three points, they're through. Group I, done and dusted, man. We know this. Belgium and Russia, they're through. Done. And finally, Group J, Italy through and Finland need just two points from their final two matches against Liechtenstein and Greece in order to make sure they snatch that final qualification spot. Armenia and Bosnia technically still in it, but as you can see, they would need some help in regards to Finland dropping mucho points. Okay, that's where we're at currently, people. Remember, only 20 of the 24 places in the final tournament will be filled via this qualification route, as the playoffs will settle the final four teams. Remember the Nations League tournament from this past summer? Think of that times four, one playoff tournament per Nation League, A through D. Okay guys, thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. Have a great day, I'm Adrian, later.